you start to play it and it's like somebody's nightmare and then this woman comes on smiling at you right seeing you through the screen then when it's over your phone rings someone knows you've watched the tape and what they say is you'll die in seven days i'm steph and i'm Ant. we're nerdazons Oh, that was great. Oh, awesome. That was so good. <laughs> Yay. Okay, we'll keep that one. We're getting better and better yeah. at this. This is our we funnest really part of the, the podcast, I think. For all our listeners out there, we actually really enjoy doing the intros. <laughs> I know. We always text each other, wait, what do you think about doing this, this episode? No, 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 this, this episode. <laughs> My suggestion was ring, ring, hello, you're going to die in seven days. <laughs> But then I thought they don't actually say it. You don't actually hear it in either film. Yeah, and you only you'll hear it in the scary movie. I think you hear it in both one and three. Yeah, when ghosts face before they do the what's up part in scary movie one. I'm pretty sure you might hear it where someone says you're gonna die or something. But yeah, anyway, side point. That was our intro. So cool to say. I love those movies. I really do. So this fortnight was my choice. I have chosen Ringu, uh, the 1998 Japanese version versus its Western remake, The Ring, in 2002. Before we get into it, I will read the synopsis for both for you. So Ringu, 1998. A reporter and her ex-husband investigate a cursed videotape that is rumoured to kill the viewer seven days after watching it. The 2002... The Ring, a journalist must investigate a mysterious videotape which seems to cause the death of anyone one week to the day after they view it. Already, the 2002 remake is, like, way more complicated than what it needed to be. Okay, so should we talk about the story first, then, the storyline? Let's just break it down, yep. Yeah, I think that's our best way to do it. So I actually have a bit to say on that as Mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. I had seen bits and pieces of... Like I'd seen the original years ago, I didn't really remember much of it. And to be fair, the most that I remembered from it was from the scary movie parody. And I'd never watched the original, but everyone has told me that the original is better. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'll give it a go. I thought maybe it's going to be creepy like The Grudge. But to the storyline, it had this mysterious eeriness to it. And it left a lot to the viewer. Like it left it up to your imagination. Yep. And I kind of liked that about it. They laid everything out for the viewer in the Western one and they expanded on some parts of the story, which I actually don't think was bad. I actually did like some of it. I really loved how in the story you thought you were doing the right thing and then right at the end the boy's like, you're not meant to help her. And that she just like sends – yeah, and it sends a chill down your spine. I'm like, oh, my God, you've just wasted that whole movie and you're not supposed to help her. What do you do? I actually think the mysteriousness of the original is what – did it justice Mm -hmm. it's like reading a book it's different for everyone when they read it themselves because it's how you perceive it in your head one thing that I did like about the new one with the storyline is I it this is I haven't seen the movie in a really long time and then I watched it and I went yep the horse bit the horse bit yep I I actually liked that that was part of the I agree in the fact that it just brought that you know she was surrounded by horses and even though it literally, like, I can't watch it. Yeah. So what I actually liked about the storyline in the Western one, yes, there was a lot more involved, but I kind of liked the way that it unfolded. It made you feel like you were the the journalist or you were the investigator trying Mm -hmm. to unfold this, like, really old crime, and I liked that. And I feel like it became more of the crime and that Samara became a curse out of the crime compared to the original. It had more, like supernatural presence to it in the beginning and and that was shown by different things in the script or by seeing different things whereas this it didn't really come across like that she was evil until after or the more you found out that she could do things that she was evil and it just made yeah. you feel like you were the investigator and it's like what happened to this little girl you know and you and you become sympathetic with her Absolutely. And when you see, you know, she's down the well, when she's carrying the Samara and you're just like, oh, and you realise, you know, it took seven days she was down there. 
Yeah, that's horrible. Even in the original one, when they go, um, when the husband goes down first and he sees all the blood and the little bits of nails, and I'm like, oh man, it's it it's such a really good element to add to the movie without having to actually say much to notice of mm-hmm. like, oh my god, she was alive when she got thrown down there, like she's mm-hmm. still alive, like, and you didn't have to say it. And it kind of reminded me of the the mummy, you know, when they see the inside of the sarcophagus and they're like, this person was alive, the scratch marks of them trying to get out. And it's just, it's freaky without you having to witness it. Now I watched it, I'm like, when I, when I watched it for the very first time, you know, it was scary. Mm. because you didn't know what was going on. Also, you know, we'd always call each other on the house phone. (laughs) Whereas now, you know, I think it wasn't as scary because I'm like, now now if somebody calls you, you know, it's you don't answer it, you know, because it's spam or whatever, you know. Yeah, or your phone's on silent, like 24-7 now. So, you know, I was like, oh, oh, okay. I, I will say... I reckon if I had have watched the original in high school or when it came out, mm-hmm. I think it would have had a different effect on me yes. as opposed to now. I really, really loved the storyline of this one and I liked the mysteriousness to it and um, that some things just weren't explained and it was left up to you. Or even when it came to them unfolding the story of um, Sadako in the tiny village mm-hmm. – it was creepy because, you know, you didn't know the full story, but it's like, oh, my gosh, it happened here or something happened here. And it, I liked that element of it. I think if, you, if you're if you after a really good horror, well, I wouldn't say really good, but if you're after a good horror film to watch one night, then just watch the second one. It had, it, for a horror story, it had the right elements of jump scares and creepiness to it. And that's, mm-hmm. I think, what, did the storyline better in in the remake? I have to say, in my opinion, I think the storyline wins for the the original. I think I agree. Yeah, I, I agree to all that. The the storyline in the first one, it it made sense, and it was just, you know, one kind of storyline. Whereas this the remake had a lot of different parts that weren't needed but yep. just made you think that little bit more no I totally understand there are some parts of it that I thought okay you didn't need that in there and and like they really overdeveloped it for example the kid I was going to talk about this in maybe actually you know what how about we move on so that way we can tie all the elements in because I actually feel the characters and the visual effects and cinematography will mm-hmm. will tie into the story mm-hmm. and I think mm-hmm. those points help build and develop those the, yeah. the storyline for both of them. So let's move on to cinematography and visual effects and makeup. So the biggest one to talk about is Samara and Sadako. So it was a very big difference in the way that she looked in both of them. I kind of liked the way Samara looked Mm -hmm. until I saw her face. Yeah. I I liked that she was this rotted, like, corpse-looking thing, and that is what her curse and her, like, ghost, if you want to say, attached to the rotting corpse that was stuck in the well, and that became her image that she's going to put on the tape. I liked that look, and it made sense, and it just made you think more about her and her situation, what happened to her. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I didn't like her face. She looked very, it looked like a man in a costume when she looked up, whereas, like, the the, the innocent child is gone, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Whereas in the original, I actually found it creepy when she just looked up and it was just the big open eye glaring at you. And it was just so simple enough to make you feel like, oh, my God, she's peering into my soul. Also, when they were coming out of the TV, I have to say 1998 wins. Yes. It it was so much cleaner. Yes. Uh, Whereas, you know, 2002, you could see that there was, like, CGI coming out. Yeah, they were trying trying to glitch it. And I was just like, nah. I I, th- I like yeah. what they tried to do, and you can see when um, when she came out, they tried to make it look like the um, static of the TV as mm. she was coming out, and I thought that looked really good, especially for like you know 2002. I, you know, I hadn't even hit high, like I was finishing primary school, mm-hmm. and that was a pretty good visual effect. I thought 
to have a layer of static and have you come like walk through it mm. it was it was pretty cool but when she was out I didn't like the staticness mm. it was really like uncomfortable I think to the eye whereas in the original she didn't have that but she had the creepy elements um they really focused in that her nails were missing and when she was trying to crawl across the oh. the tatami mat it looked like the skin was pressing in on itself. And I'm, if yeah. you've ripped your nail, it hurts when it goes past the the point where it's painful. And I, when she was just gripping on the tatami mat, I'm like, oh, that's going to be so painful with her coming across. I, I don't know. For this one, it's really hard because I do like the look of Samara, but I think the effects of how, like, Sadako came out of the screen was better. I, I agree. Yeah, and it's... and I just think she, she was so much better in 1998. Yeah, in in total, she was just creepier. The one eye thing, it, it was just yeah, Whereas and especially the, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, even with the one eye, and it was just it was just the pure white of her eye against her like pitch black hair and pale skin, and it was just creepier. And then when you and... see the sorry, you go. No, no, you go. And then when you see compared to, like, Samara, it just, yeah, like I said, it just looked like a man, an angry, like, it looked like one of the the band members of Slipknot, like a man with long hair. I agree. Like, it was a bit of a fail with the, they they overdid it very much. So they overdid her makeup in 2002. Yes. Yeah, it's the perfect way to say it. So I think that in that one, Sadako um, wins. Sadako wins, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think of the parents? Before we move on to characters, Mm -hmm. I do want to discuss just a little bit more in the cinematography and in particular Mm -hmm. the the actual video. Um, Yes, that's what I was going to ask as well. So (laughs) I think we've got a bit of a theme here, but I actually prefer the 98 version. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you prefer? I I think I prefer the 98 as well because the 2002 was just like rotten like it was just that's a good it, word it actually me, like feel like gross but 2000 at uh, 1998 made me just ugh, like creepy and felt like something had but speaking of the movie right I have to tell you this so mum decided that she was going to watch the 2002 with me and I said all right mum this is what it's about she's like okay and then she was sitting there knitting and then I said oh mum look this is the movie if you watch it you're gonna be like and she's like I'm not looking up I go mum you gotta watch she's like I don't want to die no thanks <laughs> so she she's like went it over and I said oh it'll be done in a minute she's like okay and that she said, don't, don't you tell me when it's coming on. Don't lie to me. I said, okay, mum. <laughs> I remember it's such a big thing, like, in high school and stuff when everyone's telling you to watch it. And, and then it's like, well, but I don't want to watch it just in case it's real. And, yeah, it's so funny when you're scared and naive. The amount of times, I don't know, it was cool to, like, just come come to my house and we'd watch, we watched this and Scream and, um, the amount of times that we'd always prank each other and just be like ring ring on the phone. Yes. Oh my I was like literally scared of the telephone for a while. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. I really do. We we played a prank. Uh, well, we were at a friend's house and her dad actually played that prank. I kind of knew it was happening so because I was hanging around uh like outside of the lounge room and it was just so funny she freaked out when she wished she'd finished the film because the call came through. It's just hilarious. But back to the actual movies mm-hmm. within the film, just want to break it down a little bit. Mm-hmm. So in the original, it had a really grainy black and white feel to it. And I actually really liked that. It was like you were looking through the lens of, you know, 40 years prior, which I liked. It, it wasn't good quality then. And if mm-hmm. you were to ever watch it, that's what it's going to feel like. Mm-hmm. And I liked that it was also – you know, just like memories, it wasn't anything weird and trippy. Whereas in the new one, they had like blood, like water rushing. They had the weird chair. It was like had... an art film. Yes, yeah, it was weird, but it made sense when they broke it down um, to be like, oh, this is the little chair she had in that the like, which it was horrible the way they put her up there. But yeah, I just think it didn't have to be be like that. And it, they, you would have noticed this film had a very big 
blue green like film mm-hmm. filter over it and I don't know if I liked it it was big at the time and it, it worked well for the film but I kind of like the graininess and the simpleness to the uh, like the original and the original just left you creepy it just made you feel like I don't know like she was Bad watching you through the mirror when she's brushing her hair <laughs> Yeah, I I watched them back to back, so Same. I don't know. I, and I was like, maybe I shouldn't have, but it's good because I watched the original first, and the the little kid, Yochi, yeah. he was creepy. He was. I, he was. But he was so cute. Again, he was so adorable. But then again, like Aiden was kind of creepy too, but. But he looked sick. Like he had these, like they really did the makeup yeah. uh, with these big dark Vitamin rings under D his eyes. deficiency. Yeah. But he just, I don't know. I didn't Seems take like to a him. smart as ass. Well. I haven't seen any other rings. I actually really want to watch. I want to continue watching. Yeah. I think I might give it a, give it another go. What I did like is that this movie is a bit of a slow burn. Like it, it it's a long movie but it it's good because it actually kept me interested the entire time and I wasn't you know uh, fluffing around doing anything else I was like interested enough without you know all this action and and things like that so yeah good good one yeah I will just sort of jump back to our discussion on the cinematography Uh, and video effects back to the actual ring video and another reason why I feel the 98 version was better and creepier. The the 2002 version, the girl who played, so it was Anna Anna Myers, I think, was the Mm -hmm. the woman who was combing her hair. She was the Mm -hmm. mum. She, the girl in Scary Movie 3 who played her in the video looked so much (laughs) like her and all I could remember was when she turns around when the fly is on the screen and Queen Latifah yeah. slaps the thing and she turns around and she slaps her back and then she like rips her hair out she's like yeah what are you gonna brush now and I just I kept picturing that scene and the the look she was like the, the comedy angry look on her face and the snubby look and I couldn't take that video as scary if you know what yeah. I mean mm-hmm. I think that film has kind of ruined the eeriness to the 2002 version like me with um, the Exorcist. Exorcist. Yeah, I haven't seen the the scary movies in a really long time. I think I'm gonna make that on my next watch list. Yeah, I I like the first three. I don't really like them after that. I didn't but, even know they made them after that. Yeah, I think there's a few afterwards, but the first three were the best. Yeah, but yeah, that was just that's that was another thing that I couldn't couldn't take. And the last point I'll make on that mm-hmm. the the another reason why. I didn't think the ring was better is they used this really high pitched mosquito sound with the 2002 yeah. one. And I had to continuously turn, I, I had to keep turning the volume down, but then when they talk, I'd have to put it back up. And then when the video would play or the, the mosquito ring would go, I had to just keep putting it down and it actually mm. became quite annoying yes. compared to the original. It was just a creepy film to watch. And it just – and I kind of liked the silence vibe of the original that made you film it, – it added to the eerie atmosphere. I 100% agree with that, yes. Sometimes you don't need the sounds to make it scary. Correct, yeah. Like you don't need all the sound effects. And and I think the silence um, – and, and kind of – I guess you can say almost ASMR where you could hear, you know – the wind in the background Mm. when she's thinking or like when they're out in the countryside, it was so much more effective than having sometimes to have to overlay with music and stuff. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we kind of touched on it a bit with Yoichi, but should we move on to characters? Excellent. Okay. (laughs) Who would you like to talk about first? Apart from Yoichi. Let's talk about the mum, Tomiko and Rachel, played by Naomi Watts, and Naniko, sorry, I'm going to butcher it, so, Mishima? Sorry, the, um, oh. yeah, so the mum was Reiko Asakawa. Yeah, sorry. No, no, that's okay. So, um, okay, all right, you go first, and then I'll add my notes onto that. 
the mum in Ringu, I, I felt like she didn't care about her son as much. She was a bit standoffish, whereas Rachel, you could tell she wanted to be there, but she was just so busy and that she did kind of care for him. Yeah. Um, I was talking about this earlier, actually, with my partner, mm -hmm. with them, because um, I was talking about the connection, like, in Japanese culture, it's actually quite common for kids of that age, like, four or five, when they're going off to preschool, well, not preschool, primary school, when they're heading off to school, it's actually quite common for them to take care of themselves and get themselves mm -hmm. to school and things like that. So, to me, oh, okay. when I – yeah, yeah, and I, I was – talking about it and discussing it because it's something they tried to keep in in the um, 2002 one, but it's not really something I think in Western culture, you know, you'd take your kid to school mm -hmm. because yep. there are just so many more <laughs> widows out there. Um, but in Japan, it's actually quite common for them to do that and to be quite self-sufficient. So I didn't have that vibe mm -hmm. in the original. I had the vibe that she just had to work because – um, again, it's the 90s, you know, she's a single mom. She's got to work to, to be able to keep the house for, for her kid mm -hmm. um, and to send him to school and things like that. So I felt that she worked because she had to go to work, whereas with um, Rachel, yes, I can see that she, I will say it, she acted better than Asakawa. Mm -hmm. yes. um, she had more of the emotion, but I think with Rachel, it came across that she was a workaholic and she – like she had the passion for her work and she would do it and to me mm -hmm. it, it came across that if she was working late it's because she chose to whereas mm -hmm. in the Japanese one I think if you know a little bit about the culture it's 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 a common thing and I think it came across that the mum didn't want to have to work late if she didn't have to um I think what you're saying makes a lot more sense yeah, because I, I think it's because of the acting. I think that's that's yeah. What it was. Naomi Watts did uh, like I I will say here, she acted better mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, than the Japanese actress. She definitely acted better, and she had so much more emotion on the face. Like you could see more when she was thinking. Like I couldn't see that come across in the Ringu mm -hmm. version. Mm -hmm. um, with Nanako Matsushima, she didn't have the puzzlement look on her face or she didn't have the concern. Um, and she would just get to the peak where she'd be really over the top and scream at things. But again, if you watch a lot of like um, Japanese TV or even just um, a lot of Asian TV, it's over the top dramatic, as you would know with K-pop um, mm -hmm. and K-dramas that you, yes. sorry, not yes. K-pop, K-dramas that they get over the top, but they can be a little like unemotional in some, some mm -hmm. times. And I feel like that's just, if you were a native Japanese speaker and you were watching it, it might seem normal. Um, but I think Naomi Watts portrayed more emotion mm -hmm. in the way she did it. Yes. And, and I think that's right for the movie. Correct. Yeah. I think they were both fine for the movie, but I think Naomi Watts does win this point. What about the dad? So Yoshino, um, Yakajuki, I'm sorry, I'm not even going to go pronounce that. You can pronounce that one. I apologize. So I don't know if you noticed this, but the dad, this is mm. the second movie he's been in this year with us. Really? He was in Mortal Kombat. Was he? Yeah, he was Scorpion. No. Um, he was the oldest Scorpion. He's been in Wolverine. And um, as soon as I saw him come on the screen, I'm like, that's cool. I'm glad it's no. him. No. Yeah. Oh, my God. I was wondering, like, 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 literally, I was like, where do I know him from? And it, I didn't think to look at his IMDb page until now. <laughs> but but what did you think of, of them both as, as fathers? Um. <sighs> Okay, I, I think I think instead of just breaking them down as actors, I need to talk to them as, like, a whole relationship. Of and that's exactly dad what I was going to say, is yeah. that what do you think of those two together as well and what do you think of them as a family? I felt so much more connection in the original Ringu version than I did with Naomi Watts um, and the father in that one. I just feel... You know, it, it, and they said it straight out in the 2002 version. It was a one-night stand. Whereas in, in the original one, 
you know, they were married. They had their kids for a while. They just had become divorced by this point. Yeah. Um, yep. And I could see that there was still some connection because the first person she went to was the ex-husband. So she trusted him with this and she knew his life's work is mm-hmm. to research this stuff. So it made sense to me. Okay, well, she obviously still has a connection to him um, and he was still there trying to help him. But I didn't really see it in the other one. Like I can see they were trying to act like there was chemistry, like there could be another one night stand, but I didn't see that there was a love no, I think it was Hollywood trying to make it like, oh, a romance and like you've got to make sure that, you know, he survives and he obviously, they need somebody to die to show that, you know, the reason why they survived is because they made a copy of the movie. Yeah. And I just think, you know, make them a love interest prior. Mm-hmm. Like make them make them divorced. How hard would it have been to make them just divorced? Yeah, instead of having the kids say, I already know you, I was a one-night stand. Like, that's horrible yeah. for the kids to have to know. Like, who, yeah. why would you teach your kid that? But I just think the chemistry in the original was a family, a loving family, and a companion. Like, mm-hmm. it seemed like a companionship between them. They were companions, but it just didn't work. But in the other one, it did come across. They were a fling, and then there was a bit of tension, like, like chemistry between them there but I couldn't see it go past that um at all like yeah I just and I think the way when they had the student come in in the second one who was in the remake I think it's Abby from NCIS I'm just going to confirm this but when the student assistant came in they added the additional element of her kissing him so it did it just came across like he was a player I didn't see that element whereas in the other one Mm -hmm. you can tell he kept like he was quite firm to be able to set the grounds of like you talk to them like that's that's why you're my assistant you go and talk to them I don't need to talk to them but you can tell she was trying the student was trying to initiate and he, he, he wasn't interested so I didn't see that whole like oh he's with his students whereas in the other one it's like oh you can tell he's sleeping with like his student assistant it was very obvious yes i i agree and that was um beth by paulie peretti ah yeah yeah as soon as i saw her i was like oh it's weird and seeing you with this hair color adam brody's in this movie as male teen number one <laughs> Oh, no, you know what? I, re- I was looking at him and I'm like, I've seen you before, but not in enough stuff to make me want to go and look for you. He was oh, the one that he? said, yeah, yeah, but I would never really watch that. Oh. My friend was obsessed with it, but not really me. Yeah. But I, I know him because I was like, huh. And he was the one that said the boyfriend died. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I wouldn't mind unpacking that little mystery. Mm-hmm. Sure. So in the remake... They go to the funeral, which, again, I'm just going to say the atmosphere in Ringu was so much eerie. Like, it made me feel like, oh, my God, is there a ghost in this house? Like, you had that vibe. Um, I Yeah, I'm nodding my head. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it just had that vibe. Whereas in the other one, it just, it did come across like a wake, you know, and you're just there to pay your respect. But I didn't find the house creepy when he walked upstairs or anything. Mm -hmm. So they go to the wake already in the Japanese version, um, Reiko had an idea about the tape because she was pre-interviewing school kids who were talking about this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then she, and then Rachel doesn't find out about it until she goes outside and she was asked to investigate it. So I yeah. feel the story, like, Rachel's not as connected until she watches the tape and she realises, oh, crap, I now have to go and investigate this, whereas... Mm-hmm. Reiko was already on the case and she wanted to investigate it and and what do you think about the two girls at the beginning um again so Becca and Katie I I could only think about <laughs> <laughs> scary movie I I just can't help but think of that and it had um I think Pamela Anderson I don't know who the other girl was um, <laughs> but yeah I could only think of that Whatever you think of scary movie, all I think of, no, this is my strong hand. Beep, boop, beep, beep. <laughs> That's number two. I know. Um, yeah, I I don't know. It was um, it was a different vibe. I, I wasn't as creeped out. I think I think also because they seem the the Western girls seemed so much more on the older mature side for what they were at that age. Yeah. 
Yeah, it just came across like that. Whereas I, I feel like in the Ringu one, they seemed more, more to their innocent age and, and like, innocent. Yeah, and, and which makes it creepier. Phone, they're like, oh, this is hilarious. The phone's ringing and it's just my parents. Oh, that's all right. You know, that seemed yeah. better than, than ring. the ring. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't, I don't know what you think of this. Maybe you let me know. But in the remake, it started off at the beginning, but then this effect seemed to drop in the film halfway through. But when she goes to get her drink before the, the cousin dies, you see it's almost like a predator film. Go, you know, when he's invisible and you, but you mm-hmm. can tell it's him because you see everything like shift around across the TV screen. And then when the kid, the cousin's looking at the TV in the room before Naomi Watts comes in, he can see it, it also move in the back in the hallway. Yep. They showed that twice and then it just dropped off in the film. They didn't show that effect anymore. Oh. Yeah, so I was just like, okay. Like, did, did I don't know. Did, did you run out of money? I kind of like, noticed. I noticed it and then I, and then I was like, oh, I mustn't have noticed it again. Yeah, I only noticed it the twice and then I never saw it again and I just thought, what was the point of introducing that effect? Yeah. Yeah. Mm, it just I didn't, agree. yeah, make sense to me. Going back to, like, cinematography and things, I have to say The Ring... I thought it, I liked the, I have to say, like, I like the actual ring logo better. Yeah. Because it shows that what, the what well. makes the ring, it's, it's the actual well. The artwork, yeah. And I don't know, like, Ringu felt very dark the whole movie anyway, whereas yeah. the ring didn't feel, like, you felt, I don't know, darkness, but it also didn't feel as grimy yeah that's thank you yeah yeah I think because with the original to get the effects that it was a dark film is they filmed a lot of things like you know in the dark or overcast and um and it gave you that it like that shadowing vibe which I didn't mind at, at all it was it did get a bit hard sometimes in certain shots to to fully grasp yeah, you still had some light in the second one. For example, when there's a scene when Rachel comes into the room and you can see, like, Samara's just sitting there and she grabs her hand, um, it gets really bright and it gets really bright in, the like, the mental institution where Samara is and she starts to see the the scene unfold. And, yeah, you just don't have that level of brightness in in the original. Yeah, I kind of like the griminess of the, the old videos. Yes. But it yes. could do with, like, brightening it up a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. I just that I have to definitely say that Ringu just wins for the creepiness. Yeah, I think yeah. The, the creepiness Ringu wins. <laughs> yeah, I I do have to say I'll admit I was really looking forward to watching it because I had heard that this one uh-huh. was so good and it, it was so creepy and I just remember how creepy the Grudge was and I'm like yeah it's okay this is gonna be good and I remember when I finished it and I thought oh. That was that was it. I think I hyped it up for myself, and especially, like, I agree. Yeah, like there's the one thing I do like about the Western one is there's a lot more Samara. Like there's a lot more. Like with each day, it's kind of like that horror film. You're gonna tell me what it is, but I can't think of it. But it counts down the time, like until the day they die, and like they just keep seeing like the number of days. So, no. I want to say signs, but it's not. This is going to bug me, and I'm going to have to do a little pause, and with the power of editing, we'll have this film. <laughs> but, like, in, in the I'll, – I'll find the film after, and then we'll say. But in, in the remake, like, with each day, there was a creepy element that came out of it, and it gave mm-hmm. you the, the thing of, like, oh, yeah, crap, there's someone – like, there is someone coming to kill her. And it, it kept you in the suspenseful mode, which I liked. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I wish there was just a little bit more, like, pop-ups or something in the classic one because the last sort of pop-up scare you had before because they begin investigating and it's not until the end but the last sort of pop-up scare you had was when the mum says I saw it like I found her right here and she opened the door Mm -hmm. which on makeup and um art like on the makeup work I have to say I think that the victims are creepier in the original than in the remake because yeah. they actually do look like someone who's just been petrified, whereas in the remake they look like they've just had all the life sucked out of them and their body, like, you know what I mean? Yes, yes, like, yes, suck, they, yes. Like the life is out of the corpse sort of thing. Oh, yes. And and what did you think of the grandfather dying? 
Being you mean? Oh, that was creepy. I wasn't expecting him to do that. Neither um, was I. But I can see why. He was so aggressive. Why would you run to go and talk to him after he just hit you? And why, I've said this so many times and for years, why when there is an open door in America, they feel the right to go and walk in someone else's house? Yeah. But she just walked straight in and started watching all these videos. That's, oh, yeah. I was just like, yeah, but we had an open house policy at our home. But, like, even in other movies and stuff, I'm digressing here, but you always see they'll knock and no one answers, and then they open, it's like, hello, like, Mrs. Smith, are you there? It's like, what gives you the right to go and just open someone else's house if no one has come to answer the door? I I get it. However, that's how I grew up. No, nah, it's not in my house. Like, no, you knock, like, if no one answers, you just leave. You just don't go and no, enter someone like, else. Uh, to the point where we were out shopping one day. This is like pre-mobiles. Mum, mum was the only one who had a mobile, and then she's like, "Why is there? Why is it saying that her home's ringing?" She, and she's like, "Oh, you answered. I'm, I'm scared." I'm like, "Okay." So I answered it, thinking, "Oh, it's going to be a horror movie. You know, I'm inside your house," and it was my mate going, "Hey, Steph, I'm at your house. Are you far away from home? I've just made myself a cup of tea." Oh no, nah, Tanya will be there soon. Don't worry. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's how it was like always. I can like... get it with friends, but yeah, I think it's just a different time. Like maybe when we were kids. But also, they're not straight. Like it seems to be like they're strangers that go into these people's yeah. houses. Yeah, and I haven't seen friends. so many American movies. That mm-hmm. walking into people's house, like without being invited, and the mm-hmm. fact that people in American films never shut their blinds. They're the two biggest things ever since I was a kid that have like annoyed me. Yep. <laughs> I don't know yeah, why. No, I, I agree. Know. I agree. Always shut your blind. I'm going to say that Ringu made me feel just more like icky, but I did like some of the effects in The Ring. I agree. Such I agree. as, you know, I said it again, but I really like the fact that they added the horse. I like the way that they killed the grandfather. I agree. I like the horse scene was so intense. Oh, Even when she yeah. kept trying to pat his head, I'm like, girl, just go away. The animal doesn't want you there. Just leave him alone. You're stressing him out. Do not stress that poor animal out. <laughs> and then he goes crazy. And then they show you the blood and I'm like, oh, wow, that got graphic. I'm glad I did watch Ringu because everybody was saying that it's so good, so good. And I am old enough now starting to get into more horror that I can appreciate it a lot more than if I was, you know, 16 and when this one came out and being like... I agree. I'm really glad I got to watch it. And it is something I have wanted to watch for quite some time. I like elements of both of them. Mm -hmm. Um, And there are some things that worked best for the original and there are some things that worked really well for the remake. Mm -hmm. This one was actually quite a close one for me to, to have to rank. Should we move on to the ranking sure what do you give both of them out of how many movie reels i'm gonna give ringu four yep because i really liked it and i'm glad i watched it first and i'm glad that i hadn't watched the ring in a really long time and i like that it had like extra gory ness to it and i really liked that it it gave me the chills that I just the, the kids being you know pet uh, killed was really scary as well. I just I, I thought you know it's an enjoyable film and I will watch it again. So yeah, four stars. What do and you give the other one? So the ring. Um, I am going to go with a three point five. Okay. I liked it. I don't know, Aiden just really kind of annoyed me in this one. It wasn't as impactful in total as Ringu. Yeah, yeah so I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to give it a, a 3.5. Okay, so I pretty much had pre-planned this before we started recording. I <laughs> And I'm just going to say we both ranked the same for The Ring. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also gave it a 3.5. It wasn't a bad film. It's not my go-to horror film, but I would watch it again, and I do enjoy watching it. This was a really close one for me, a very close one, and I actually am going to give Ringu a 3.75. It was very close to what you had ranked, but I just think 
it was a great one and I love the story and I love the eeriness to it. Mm-hmm. However, I think I was expecting a little bit more, not so much the jump scares, but I was expecting a bit more interaction with Sadako. Like I, had... I agree and that's why I didn't give it any higher is because I was expecting a little bit more from this movie. Yeah, yeah, like even in when I think back to like The Grudge, there's lots of creepy interactions or you might hear the like scurrying and the banging on the walls and things oh, like that of like I oh, seen the grudge. Oh, ah, so like it's just like your typical I guess ghost movie where you might hear something banging and, and you sit there and you think, "Oh my god. I'm the only one in the house. What the hell is that?" We made it. Maybe I should make that another choice. Yeah, and I just think I like even just little hints like that might have sort of mm-hmm added to the element but it it just seemed like you could have had a very blissful seven days Mm -hmm. once you've watched it until you die whereas in in the remake you were reminded every day hey there is something coming for you and there would be a bit of a sign and I think that's why it's very close I like them both and I'd watch them both again I do think the storyline I preferred more in Ringu and the eeriness and the the mysterious story to it which is why I'm giving it a 3.75. Mm-hmm. But yeah, to me, that they're good horror films. They're not my favourite. I'd watch them. Yeah, so I think they get an above average. Same, and I think I'm gonna. I'm intrigued to watch the second. The second one. Me too. I've never watched the sequels. But no. when you when the the thing ends of Ringu, I don't know if this is um if you if I maybe watched this or read it wrong, but she calls her dad to say she's coming to pick up Yoichi. And then she's got the video player and the the VHS, and then she says, can you ask Yoichi to do something? And I'm wondering, did she just sacrifice her dad for her son? Did she just say, can you get Yoichi to show you the video? Or, like, I, I don't know. <gasps> and it didn't, I never um, thought of that. Yeah, I don't know. So it makes me wonder, you know, does it get explained in the sequel? Because it, it just sort of ends. You That, that with the film that is one part of the storyline I didn't really like of the Japanese one is it doesn't exactly say show it to someone else and then the curse moves on it just says you know you showed someone whereas they really explicitly said it in the western one yeah yeah yes as you explain that I just had like the last 30 seconds of the movie showing just to be just throw on myself I'm like yeah no that makes way more sense yeah so I just I don't quite fully remember that ending but that was the way I perceived it that she was going to get her dad to get her son to show the film I don't quite know but yeah it it comes to that and and Aiden mentions that in in the the second one what happens to the person who sees it I mean if you don't explicitly tell the next person to show the film on and you sacrifice that one person the film will end because you can smash the film and destroy it and then yeah. the curse ends with that one person. But then that's just getting, like, way into it. <laughs> no, that's what I thought along the whole time, going, why don't you just destroy it? And then, like, you've made a copy, destroy it, then that's it, you know? Yeah, but the son had seen it. So now she has she had to make the copy to save her son so he doesn't die. I know, but then he's made a copy. So Yeah, but if she got the grandfather, like, if she, yeah. if she got her dad to watch it and she just let it end with him, you could actually stop the curse from spreading. But it almost yeah. seems like in the second one they're trying to say it's never-ending. It's never going to yeah, stop. Yeah, yeah. And that's what Samara said. She's like, she said, I'm, um, I'm sorry, right. I don't want to hurt anyone, but I'm not going to stop. And it's not never going to stop. Yes, and that's why she never sleeps. That's right. Okay, ask me the big question. Okay, what do you think... Ringu got on Rotten Tomatoes. Okay, so I think because it's meant to be one of the best, you know, horror movies of all time, it's really well hyped. I'm going to go with that hype. I'm going to say it's like 95 on Rotten Tomatoes. Very close. Higher or lower? Higher. No. I think this is one of our highest ranked films on the mm-hmm. tomato meter. I don't think we've had anything this high. 97 you got it <gasps> that's awesome yeah so you got 97 which i think is our highest film on yeah. the tomato meter mm-hmm. the audience score is a bit under the audience score is 81 percent. but i also feel it is very retro still 
like the the equipment and things is still very old school so maybe it also didn't age as well with the younger generation Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but yeah nice work you got that one let me bring up the next one i thought i had the second one up but clearly i didn't i had the wrong page while you're looking at that i'm going to guess that it's also had a hype so and I, i we both agreed that it's not as good so I'm going to say 89%. Ooh, lower. <gasps> really? Yeah, you're actually quite a bit off on this one, but not like a lot off. But you're not close within a couple. We usually get very close, but. So I'm going to then go 62%. A bit too far. It actually got 71%. Oh, wow. And the audience score was quite less. It was 48%. Oh, wow. Yeah. I actually think, though, when when I was doing a lot of research for this film and I was also trying to, you know, sit back and think, which did I enjoy more? Which would I watch more? I would watch both more. But the remake actually got poo-pooed on a lot. And, you know, I yeah. feel like it was almost like the hardcore fans are like, no, you got to watch the original. you got to watch the original. I actually think the remake was good. And I, I feel the audience score should be a bit higher than that. And we're, like we said, you know, they're not very far from each other. No, it, yeah. You know, if one's 97%, we, the other one should at least, you know, be in the 90s. I actually feel the Western one should be in the 80s. I yeah. didn't expect it to be at 71. No, neither The audience I. score I didn't expect to be that low. Well, I did because you get, like I said, the hardcore mm-hmm. fans. Mm-hmm. But, no, I actually don't think that it was a bad film and I would watch both, again, easy. And I actually kind of want to watch, maybe I might make it a continue on sequel film, but I do want to watch both the Ring 2 Japanese version and the Ring 2 Western version. And I'd like to that continue that. That would be good. Yeah. Maybe next Halloween. Well, maybe. I've got to find a November film, so maybe I might do that. Mm. I'm a skeptic, skis. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So shall we move on to Nerdison's Nerdy Notables? Okay. So I'm a little bit late to the game. However, I have just started Kim's Convenience. Oh my gosh, you are late to the game. Even I watched that. I love that show so much. It's so good. I think I only watched the first two seasons or maybe a season and a a half, but I do love that series. It's so good. Oh my gosh, I love it when when Mr. Kim's like, um, I'm a great father. If I had me as a father, I'd be like, thanks me for having me. (laughs) He's so funny. He's hilarious. I do really love the dad of that series. He's so good. But, yeah, so I smashed out, like, two seasons of that. Um, And I've got my Vax. Woo! Shot nice one down. Work. Well, hopefully um, by the end of this week I'll be able to schedule myself in, um, we'll be in the age bracket, which will be nice. Um, for yeah. me, for my notables, they're going to be quite small. I've just sort of been binging the watch. I am only, I think I have two episodes to go to finish the season, so I can't really okay, call it a binge. how good is it? It's so good. And I am so obsessed with the gold song by The yeah. What. And I can't find it anywhere. There's no soundtrack out for this. And it came out in February this year. And I'm like, how is there not a soundtrack yet? I even had to record it to show my brother and be like, no, trust me. Like, this is a dwarf song about gold and it is epic. And I, and now I just listened to the recording um, like I hear this this because uh, it cuts the scene and goes to other parts of the story and you have to hear them talk and I'm like I don't care it's worth listening to that just so I can hear the bits and pieces of, the, of this song because I'm obsessed with it. And you know who Dr. Cruces is, right? Uh, I don't know if I came uh, across she's that. The, she's the. Are you talking about the person from the um wait the the assassin or the like mayor person? The uh, she's Osgood from Doctor Who. Oh, hang on. And you know that the mayor person was in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll check that out. But that's really oh. all I've been up to. I haven't watched much more, sadly. Oh, actually, no, How I lied. Gwen. <laughs> I love Gwen. I love Gwen. Yes. Sword. <laughs> yes. No, I. I love Matt Berry. <laughs> I I know. When as soon as I heard his voice, I was just like. <gasps> Oh my God. Bob, Bob. Oh, that's my favorite line of his 
me and my partner do it all the time in the house. And then the other thing we always say from him is, did you ever watch Toast? Uh, toast? The Toast? I, I've watched a little bit of The Toast. There's a part so he, uh, there's a part in it where he has to record and you've got to, like, it's for a ship. So you can't be over the top and it's fire the torpedoes. And he sits there for like a minute and he's like, fire the torpedoes. Fire all the torpedoes. And he just does it in like all these different voices. And we just walk around the house all the time doing that. <laughs> that and then also I'll say one last thing another thing that's my favorite from him is like there's somebody at the door there's somebody at the door <laughs> anyway I love Barry no, but speaking of Matt Barry because he brings me back to like the Mighty Boosh whenever yeah. I love the Mighty Boosh and I recently watched that and whenever we're like cooking something and there's cheese mum will go can you grab the cheese and I'll go what's that she goes don't do it <laughs> I go cheese is a kind of meat a tasty yellow beef I milk it from my teeth mm, <laughs> cheese <laughs> she's like oh he's so good though but I no him. I do have to finish off that I do need to finish off that series. I've got two episodes to go. And yeah. I did lie. I haven't actually mentioned this in the last couple of episodes. I should have mentioned it because I watched these a while ago, but I watched a couple. I've been getting into a bit more anime, and I watched the series Kakeguri High, um, which is on Netflix. Uh, I just binged in a day. This one was within the last week. I binged Beastars. That was questionable. Um <laughs> Don't know if I want to continue watching that, but that was interesting. And then I also have been watching, I watched the first two seasons of Food Wars as well. So mm -hmm. they're the anime that I've been watching a lot lately. Oh, cool. Yeah, so yeah. That's, that's all I've been up to. Just, yeah, me watching Kim's Convenience. I got a little bit sick from the vaccine, so felt a little bit sorry for myself, but at least that helped me get through. And also uh, we started the Kaminsky Method. That's great as well. What's that one about? It's got Doug, uh, Michael Douglas, and that um, he's a aged actor, and his best mate is an old man, and that they just like it's just two old men having a great conversation where they wake up and they're like, "What part of me is going to hurt today?" And um, <laughs> it's just it's a great show. Nice, yeah. I am. Um... I'm only like an episode in, so. Yeah, so I'll probably just be watching, oh, coming up, I'll probably be watching the upcoming episodes for next month, which is our Halloween month. Yay, my <gasps> favourite. And, oh, I'm a bit excited. So a show started on Amazon, uh, sorry, 20th of August, called Nine Perfect Strangers. That looks really good. It's an ultimate cast. Okay, um, what's it about? Nine Perfect Strangers has Nicole Kidman in it. It has Melissa McCarthy, Luke Evans, Samara Weaving. Wait, I uh, think I saw the trailer to this. And, yeah. um, like, Nicole Kidman's in, like, the long blonde hair and she's yep. supposed to be, like, all tranquil. Like and a Yeah, like a goddess kind of. Ugh, she looks like a cult. skeleton. She looks very cultish. Mm, interesting. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm keen to start that. Drag Race, we finally found out about the game within the game, and it was so good. Silky Nutmeg Ganache, you're just like going, ugh, whatever. She, I hope that she passes the last lip sync with Eureka. Ah, oh, I can't wait. Nice. I'm so out of tune with that, but nice. Uh, you, need to, you need to get back onto that, that bandwagon. Anyway. But anyway, so what's, uh, you could tell us what next month's episode yeah, is. So next month, Steph has chosen Carrie. I have. And the remake. Um, and for next month, I'm going to do a little special for both episodes. If you listen to our first season, which was very different to what we do now, but I used to do a little segment called Penny Dreadfuls and I talk for five minutes about something creepy and I'm going to do that for next month's episodes. So yes. we're going to do Carrie and then my choice may be, may be different. We don't know with the current COVID climate, but I have for now chosen Candyman, which may or may not be released in Australia at the time of recording. So we will keep you up to date. If not, uh, I'll let you know in the Carrie episode if it is changed. Um, so you've got, you know, time to watch the other movies. But yeah, oh. stay tuned for that. I've watched Candyman. Oh, yep. Yeah, now, 
don't want to go into that one just yet. If you want to follow us on socials, we are at Nerdazons on Facebook and Instagram. You can send us an email at nerdazons at outlook.com. And if you want to listen to us and give us a like, a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and wherever you get your podcasts from. Yeah, and we do also have merch by the amazing Craftcaster. So you can find that on Teespring. Head over to Teespring and search Craftcaster. And until then, stay nerdy.